Hello, my darlings. We are going to play Juniper's Knot. I found it. It's the thing. It's the thing I found that looks gorgeous, and it's a visual novel. It's apparently also very short. Aside from those details, I don't really know anything about it. It has pretty good ratings, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the writing's any good. <laughs> so basically, uh, we're going to find out together. I've actually been really excited to play this because, like I said, it looks incredible. Just really beautiful. So we're going to play it. We're going to see... We're gonna see what this is all about. Let's start. Ooh. Much of these stone walls and floors have weathered into dirt and dust, revealing the foundation. Much of the ceiling, too, has crumbled to the ground, layering in flecks and bits. Below me now is such tired soil. Tired. Tired soil. Pa. There isn't much to do here but burn dead leaves and wait. Watch the smoke rise, curl up fresh and tickle the inside of your nose. Dull as bones, it is. But what can I do? I'm stuck. Some might say cursed. I'd rather say bound. I don't like to think very much about it. I kneel to the small fire I've started, taking up a few embers and loam into my palm. It's this glow that stirs me and reminds me that my heart is still beating. I bring the scorched earth close to my face, shut my eyes and breathe it in. I taste it and spit. It's barren. I'm probably going to wait here forever. <gasps> oh, I'm a cutie! I'm a cutie pie! What? There's an unnatural rustling not far off. West? West, huh? What is it? Who? Another? Here? My eyes sharpen and my ears perk up. I feel my heart thumping into my throat. Should I be forward? Give a call? Would that work? Cry out, plead, help, help, damsel! A fool sort of lie. Would that work? No. Go still. Listen. Just listen. Whatever it is, it's right busy about here. Noises tumbling rough from old doorways. Chests wine open. Shops and homes are explored. A scavenger, then. Someone found this place? Tut. <laughs> Hearing these sounds is just... odd. It shouldn't be odd, but it is. Strange. I should remember such sounds. Oh, the noise is getting closer. Is it? Am I imagining that? Med Probably. No, it's surely in the manor now, poking around the kitchen and lounge. I decide, on the chance that it will find its way to the ballroom, to stand. I take a good posture and await this new company. And to my surprise, it. <laughs> we only get to see half of him. <laughs> it. No. He. Shows up at the door within the next minute. A boy? A man? What kind of thing is this again? He's carrying a pack and has a bottle on his waist. Maybe he's a traveler then. <laughs> just like slowly creeping up on this kid. Doesn't look like he's noticed me yet. He's just wandered in, stare adrift. After a few steps, I catch his eye. He moves a little, mo he moves a little closer to look me in the face and then some more to see my feet. He stops there. He's staring now, and doing nothing more. This is the most awkward encounter. <laughs> Come here! As if realizing something, he stiffens. His heart beats loud in the air. I need your help, so come on! Come here! He doesn't bend. What is he up to? What does he think this is? I speak again, this time with a little bite. The hell are you waiting for, tit? Oh, have I been rude? Have I been rude? Oh, well, you are cordially invited to move your dumb legs. For the first conversational words I've spoken in centuries, they could have been worse. He shakes with fear and stands back. A fiend? Slow, are you? What does it matter? What are you pissing your trousers for? Get over here. Uh, no way. You'll eat my soul. A what? A smile cracks along my face. Ha! <laughs> Your soul? Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. 
When was it when I last laughed like this? I grin. I grin so brightly, watching, chuckling while he shrinks back a little, and a little more. And now, person? Person, you're just perfect. A jester, won't you lend an ear? Before I e eat your soul? <laughs> At my laughter, he glares. Stealing himself, he answers me. You're not catching me, demon, you got that? I've read the stories. I'm tired, but I ain't stupid. I like read books and stuff sometimes. Am I that famous? T Mercy, I left a mark. You know what I mean. Hell, I really don't. Feeds, devils, demons, all ya, I know how it is. And how is it? You're all foul, and you try to trick people, and just do a stuff. Trick you? <laughs> oh. Oh, I really just can't believe it. What's happened in the years I've been gone? And what if I'm not trying to trick you, person? What if I just want to hear you? You just want to hear me? What the hell? Like, what's it you've read, lad? Do tell. I'd love to hear a story. I'm a little bored. Uh, I think I'm just gonna go. You're like mega weird. You turn tail on a bloodthirsty, wicked fiend. Look, I know something dirty when I see it. You ain't fooling nobody. Uh, he's just so precious. What a precious babby. Alright, alright, I tell you what, I tell you, I- Like all us fiends, devils, demons, and plainly trying to win your extravagant soul through my dastardly wit. Honest and true, I'm a rook. But please, please, at the least tell me of what you've read. Well, how do you want to listen to me so much? Because I'm bored, and your voice, ugh, your voice, I just- I could just swoon. Horse feathers. <laughs> Who wrote this? <laughs> I really do want to listen. Would you be so kind? Ah, uh, he's genuinely considerate. Such a delight. I do want to hear him. In the meantime, I look him over a little more finely. He's got a fair face, but through the fabric of his shirt, I can see that he's muscled. A surprise! Even the soldier boys seemed a bit lean back in the days I rode at Marley. I wonder what it is he does. He smells like an animal, in the most pleasant way that can be said. It's quite good. They're gonna touch butts later. Also, he has the faintest scent of watercress about him, mingled with black oil. What a peculiar lad. That is a peculiar... That's... that's weird. Yep. Huh? I really better not stick around here. I guess I can tell you some things, though. Uh, yeah, I guess I can tell you. Long as you stay put, you hear? What's keeping me from you is more powerful than I care to challenge, person. Yeah, okay, whatever. Here is a story, one from a book I read a lot when I was little. <laughs> oh, pardon, pardon. I very, find it very hard to think of you any littler. Would you just shut up, God? <laughs> There was a cobbler in Whiteacre who had nothing to eat. He was poorer than dirt. Yeah, he did have a girl, and it made him real sore. He didn't have a girl? A dame, like a, like a, a, a honey, a honey bun. She didn't have a wife. Oh, okay, <laughs> continue. While he was walking down an alley, he met a man. He had on a dark cloak with a hood that covered his eyes, and the cobbler couldn't make heads or tails of it. He stopped and asked the cloaked man if he'd like his shoes worked on. Th that's stupid! Why would he do that? Because he needed work? Because he was real poor? Well, he should have gone around ruining shoes if what he needed was work. <laughs> anyway, the cloaked man said he wasn't wearing shoes, but he could use a new pair. But obviously the cobbler's a cobbler, so he don't make shoes. He tells him that. And the cloaked man says, actually, I could really use some new shoes. And the cobbler looks at him weird and says he could get them if the guy's sick. And the cloaked man said, will you do that? I do some in return. And the cobbler says, like what? And the cloaked man says, I, like, any, anything. Let's say anything. He leans forward darkly as he says this. I smirk at the action. Now, I know what you're thinking. I've heard this one before and know how it goes. Well, you don't. Because the cobbler says, 
perhaps not. And he walks away. How exciting. But here's the thing. So while he's walking, he notices the alley's longer than usual. But he doesn't think about it. He thinks he's just tired from work. And he keeps walking. But while he's walking, he sees another man in a cloak. And he stops and asks if the man who used his shoes to get worked on. Cloak man says he doesn't have his shoes. And the cobbler stops and looks at him and says he'd better get moving. And the cloak man says he could really use some new shoes. And while he's moving, you know... I nod. He keeps running into this man in a cloak and can't find the end in the alley. Actually, every time, it takes longer and longer until he sees the man in the cloak. And on the eighth time he runs into the man, he stops and asks, what's the game? Like, what's going on? And the cloaked man looks at him with yellow eyes, uh, much, much like yours, and says he could really use some new shoes. For what, the cobbler says. I don't know, the cloaked man says. F for anything. What do you want? The cobbler knows exactly what he wants, but fiends have yellow eyes like yours, and he knows a fiend. Nonsense. I actually sighed hearing that. So what you're telling me, if this story is anything good to adhere to, is that I might have already trapped you. I don't know. I don't think you did. Why not? He shrugs. I, d I don't think you did you? Hmm. I really must say your manner of storytelling is queer. What? Like, gay? I mean, it's strange. Uh-oh. I don't know, it's just very strange to my ears. Well, I, I don't know, your ears are kind of weird too. How's your story end? How does it end? Well, the cobbler goes desperate, makes a pact with the feed to get new shoes by the next day. The feed will give him gold for him to do that. So the feed gives him the gold, but he doesn't make it. The feed traps him in an alley so he can't leave, and his soul is taken and then he's damned. The feed eats his soul and leaves the alley for a farm. A farm? Yeah, I know. I snort. <laughs> well, that's just comedy. I think it's supposed to be something, but I don't know what it's... I, I don't know. Point is, don't get caught up with fiends, no matter what. You're getting caught up with a fiend right now. Well, you don't feel right. I what? He shakes his head. Oh, it's nothing. I look at him and try to figure him out. Figure out his opinions and his story. In the time he's told it, he seems to have taken another idea of me. I'm not sure why that is, either. I appreciate you telling me that story. Yeah, don't mention it. Uh, uh. So opaque. You still wary of me? Yeah, obviously. I frown. Well, do you want me to tell you another story since I'm here? Uh, uh, uh. The unsolicited offer throws me. Is he really asking? But no, if I'm too eager, I can't ask for that. No! I pause. No, I'm fine. Okay, if you say so. I'm gonna go now, then. Go? Yeah. I gotta go home, so... I'm gonna go. Ah. Uh. Oh. He begins to turn around. <gasps> stay! Please stay! Please! I won't take your soul! Honest, I won't! And then like an idiot, I move my hand out, reaching for him with singular wanting. I move past the second meter, past the circle's edge with my fingers, and withdraw with a start as they're set afire. Dropping to my knees, I scream. I cry out and howl, clutching the flames and smothering them. Tears crawl down my face, and I snarl with pain. I shut my eyes and moan. I hear him step a bit closer. You were stuck there? Looking up at him from the ground, I feel my teeth chattering. And I know why I want him to stay. Yes, I know. To rend him! Because as if, as if it just wasn't so funny enough that vines sweat down from the walls and grass is borne through stones so close just outside this putrid circle. Now there's a human breathing before me. Comedy. Everywhere but here, but near to me, to my desolating blood. These years have damned me, cut and clawed beneath my skin. Scars invisible, but nevertheless blighting. I hate it. I hate it. Hate it so much. 
I hate the feeling it gives to my heart and the strength it takes in kind. I hate it! My flesh heats and I look away from him. Looking into his eyes enrages me. Uh, you like, okay, how long have you been here? Long enough to beg! Long enough, you hear? Too long, I've been in this stinking pile. It doesn't matter to you. I mean, I'm asking because I want to know, like, what's going on. That was real weird. Well, I don't want to tell, okay? Uh, I'm sorry, miss. Miss? I take a look at my clicking, stuttering hand, my slight still... My... S s with tears. <laughs> it's sizzling. Small blazes dance between the fingers. I take my tongue to it, soothing the burns. You're a bold one, Kay. Call me a flap. A uh, what? Is you're a flapper, lady? Miss? It means something different now. This is just what you're supposed to call ladies out of respect. Lapping the flames from the back of my hand, I glance at him. Oh, that rat. Are you like, okay or what? I suck my ring finger and squint. What's that? All right, are you fine? Is that okay? All right? <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm a fiend. Yes, I heal fast. Though I can still feel it snap and pop in the joints. I whistle cool air through my digits and take myself from the ground. <laughs> are you gonna stay? I, uh, I mean, I could... Oh. Thank you. I'm actually lost right now, if I'm being honest. I have no idea where I am. Oh, lost, is it? Lost. That's a sweet irony. What? Don't look so addled, person. The irony's quite obvious here, isn't it? He squints. Think, after all, I can't even be lost forever and ever. I'll know where I am, and where I am is stuck. I laugh again, but he doesn't find it funny. He doesn't seem to find it much of anything at all. I quit it, wiping away a figurative tear. Ha! Oh, I know this place so intimately, it'd redden your face. He jerks and gives his head a shake. Uh, if, if you... Uh, uh, hmm? Uh, if you know where this is, do you know where's more? Ah, uh, so earnest. I don't know what more is. I know moors. Moors? Uh, moors, you follow? I don't know what you're talking about. My, ain't this right dizzy jig we're dancing. Time's making fools of both of us. <laughs> his look's a bit hazy, as though he's having a hard time keeping his eyes fresh. I turn my head silently. What's moor, person? Where I, well, it's my town. It's like where I was born and stuff. A town? A new town? City? I think it's been there for a while. Oh, that right. He doesn't speak, and I glance over just quickly enough to catch him at the end of nodding. Did you know this place was a moor for a time? This, I don't, what are you, huh? It's a dead place. A wet place. I, too, was born in a moor. Uh. 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 Can't your stomach read a mood? Bleeding hell, I was about to tell a tale. Oh, sorry. Are you hungry? I'm starving. Us fiends here, we only eat souls. And only for pleasure. Quit joking around. Just joking. Hey, do you got any food? Uh. What are you blathering on about now? I look like I got food. I don't got any food, idiot. However, here. I thrust out my hands just before the barrier, palms up. Ugh. Give me the chestnuts in your pack. I smell them. He hesitates. Why? So I can gobble them up. What you think? I'll cook them for you. They're not long from the branch or the ground, smells like. You haven't cooked them? And nor have you eaten them. You prefer the taste of them cooked? He nods slowly. I twitch my fingers, waiting. Is there something you want for this? Your company for the morning, till noon. That's it? I nod. Okay, deal. Oh, it's bold! It's in bold! You made a deal! Ah! His words spoken like a knell. It resonates deeply, 
echoing and shakes ash from the walls. Startled, the boy covers his mouth. Deal, was it? Hm. I smile. Hair. Did I just do a thing? Yep, you made a pact. <coughs> Shaking his head, he sighs. Wordlessly, carefully, he takes off his pack and opens it up. Withdrawing a bushel of nuts in two hands, he moves forward. I look down at him, still waiting. And with steady movements, he brings his hands to mine. He holds my gaze, and I don't move at all. But I do think. I think, wait, couldn't I just... Couldn't I just... You know. Quickly, just... My hands tense, but it ends with a thought. Uh. He drops the heap into my palms. My fingers curl around it. Again, I turn up my lips. Seeing this, he hops back. Give me just a moment. I take all but one to my left hand, holding the last between my right thumb and forefinger. Opening my mouth, I bring it between my teeth and puncture it with one of my fangs. I bite through the shell, making a rough cut from one end to the other, and take it out. Observing the inner flesh of it, I spit out the shreds. Satisfied, I go on to carve the second, third, fourth, and so on. When I've finished, I hold the chestnuts aloft and make a hearth of my hand. This'll take a while, person, but not so long. Might we talk some? Uh, sure. Then have a seat. Where do we leave off before your stomach so rudely interrupted me? He sits, chin on his knees, and eyes half-lidded. Oh, no more or something? Oh, yes. I'll tell you a story about moors in return for yours. Though rather than a story, a chad be nice, huh? Save you a story for a bit later. Well, I don't know what we will talk about. Moors? Oh, right. My moor? Uh, mine. There really isn't much to say, come to think of it. You were born there? I, like all fiends, I was born in waste. You've read about us, huh? About how we make barren anywhere we stand? Unconsciously drain life from Earth for our sustenance? Yeah. <laughs> Piled land and caligonous loft. Air crawling low and damp with miasma. The pith of plants choked, sterile. I feel my face twisting to scowl. Uh, that sounds really nice. Ugh. It sounds hideous. I know, because it is. Did you grow up there? <laughs> Neat question. Yes, I did. Had a mother and a father. Always got me wondering, is this where I'll be when I get old? A bloody moor? <laughs> Guess not. You left it, then. I left it for many places. What was it like growing up there? Tedious. Maybe I shouldn't have brought this all up, huh? You just don't want to talk about it. That's okay. No, it's not a matter of okay. There's just not much of anything to talk about. It's all very, uh, colorless. Ooh. What about yours? By what? Your moor. Oh, it's not really anything special. It's just like a city. Typical to me is not the same as typical to you. Well, it's big. It's loud. The streets are packed with folks. Lots of smoke and brick. My mom and pa run a farm near there because they're crazy. Oh, is that where your scent's from? My scent? You smell like herbs and horses. It's kind of adorable. Ugh. You also smell like black oil, but I'm not sure where it's from. The city's pretty bothered. I have to lift canisters of oil from place to place every Wednesday. Oh, tough. He nods. Huh. Very tough. Hey, knock it off, will you? I do hard work. He kind of slurs his sentence, but is nevertheless determined to appear strong. I believe you. For your noble, strong efforts, I think it's time for your story. You ready? He shrugs. I clear my throat and loosen up my shoulders somewhat, poising my fire hand dramatically. Mm-hmm. Did you know that stars sometimes act as rain in the night sky? It would be like a meteor shower. Yeah, look, shut up, okay? I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. Well, I've heard of it and know it because I've seen it. Imagine this. Thousands. Thousands of light, and they all bleed along the cold cerulean mirror above, slowly, very slowly. Follow, they are so very slow, that as they make the long stretch out above you, you hardly notice their drag. It is an impeccable slowness. Imagine it. 
he nods very slowly, and nods in another way, drifting into my memory. And flash! I flare the fire in my hand, the chestnuts wax, spitting, crackling. He jumps, the light catching in his eyes. Flash! <laughs> flash! Flash! With each of these words, I stoke the flames. They lick up and dance wildly. Each single brilliant streak cuts through the lights, independent and free. And then, it dies. The magic in my palm fades and sighs. It pulses, fades, pulses, and fades. His eyes glaze over. Like this. Like a heart's last beating. Death is quick to these stars. Straying my eyes from the light, had they so turned I hadn't noticed. I gaze upon the boy. Say, person, is that sorrowful to you? What? He thinks of an answer. Well, I guess so. There isn't a right answer, person. You don't have to consider it like there is one. You think it's sorrowful? I do, yeah. That's interesting. That's truly, truly interesting. I end the fire, leaving the chestnuts to cool. Was that my story? I'm the worst. I blow on them and breathe on them, ears twitching. These are done now. I hold them out to him. My end of the bargain's met. And you know what? I'll do you a favor. I'll go ahead and roast the rest of your chestnuts in my fire here. I motion to the dead leaves. I'll do this for free, for no deal. All that's left now is for you to stay. Squinting, he waits a little, but soon enough crawls forward on his hands and calves, his pack in tow. He stops at the edge of the circle and takes the fruits from my hand. He looks at me, wearing a kind of ugly expression. What? Settling onto his rear, he keeps looking at me, but a bit less ugly. He seems to be wondering something. Eventually, he looks at the nuts in his hand instead, his face softening. He shells one and pops it into his mouth. His face flushes naturally. He chews a little. He pushes his pack into the circle with his foot, shifts back a few feet, and speaks. Which part of that was the story, miss? <laughs> I'm so glad he called me out on it, because that was a terrible story. Well, look at you. You aren't entirely daft. I take up the bag from the ground and shake it a little. Doesn't smell like there's anything more in chestnuts in here. I open it up and check. Sure enough, finding the things in excess. Some with the burrs still on, some still green. I toss those ones. I still rummage through it, just in case there might be something of interest. There's not. "'Twas a preamble, it was. There's a story to it for certs. Told you I've seen this." Blinking, he nods. With a hollow sound, I crack one of the chestnuts apart in my mouth. I grow the fire at my feet and drop it in there. No more flashy tricks now. As I reiterate these actions, I speak to the boy. I was not alone with those stars, then. I was with another miss. Dropping another into the fire, I watch its fall. My eyes lose some of their color. She was fair, young, and human. A perfect miss. Such a charming girl, we would dance together and sing and press close when unseen. Huh. I was fascinated with her, I think. And so, when she'd gotten melancholy, I brought her from town into those stars. I had the ache in my knees, knew the eventide would be crying, and I had figured the beauty of it would settle her. The boy constricts his brow, chewing somewhat sadly. Oh, not to worry, not to worry. It did, it did. He swallows. I've never understood the custom of man. I've always been free-thinking, never bound to the thoughts of others. My actions that night, no, my actions altogether, none took kindly to it when she returned. What happened? What happened? What? Well, after I took her back to town, she was plowed and beaten and beaten and beaten and plowed and beaten until she couldn't move or breathe. The boy stares, a nut in his hand held stiff, only so near to his parted lips. I buried her under the sky where I last saw her smiling. He closes his mouth into a frown. Century later, I returned to her spot and found an olive tree grown there. It was the sickest thing. Gnarled and twisted it was. Furious, I raised the entire plant. Its trunk, its bark, its branches and leaves, I scorched its roots. Would have torn out the roots, though refrained to not disturb her. Yet lest I had seen it, it remained alive. Born fruit and uglier than before. Ugh. Isn't that the most wonderful story one can tell? No, this is a terrible story. <laughs> I drop the last of the chestnuts into the leaves. Did you mess up the guys who did it? Mess up? You're a fiend. Did you eat them? I didn't eat them. 
What happened to them doesn't matter to the story. Uh, well, I wanna know! I don't wanna tell. Ugh, seriously, miss? You know, when kids in the neighborhood mess with my kid brothers, I beat their faces in with a stick, because I'm a bad. And that's what love is, is taking care of your mates. Love. That way you figure from this tale that I fancied her? Well, d duh. Ugh. It's my story, person, not yours. Come off it. It's an old story, and it's only a story, so stop. What? God, this is such a waste of my time. Bad. He chucks the shell in his hand against the wall at his side, his expression sour. Fud. I was just entertaining you as I cooked. That's stupid. Bollocks, I don't want to hear that from your full ass. Well, it's stupid. It's stupid. F forget it. What's this? You starting? Your stones dropping now? Drop them any further, I'll tear them out. Tear out your tongue, too, you hear? Don't start with me. The boy freezes, hand hovering over his last chestnut. <laughs> I'll rip your legs off, you understand? Don't you start with me. Last thing you need to be worrying over is your soul, since I'll rend you limbless if you start with me, and there won't be anything to be holding that soul at all. You start with me, I'll kill you. We clear, person? Can't even get to him. I don't know why I'm threatening him this much. He quickly nods. I chuckle. You're a cute thing, aren't you? Quailing so tender. I can't move from here, person. You know that. Quivering, he speaks up. Oh, it just sounded real. Oh, did it? The boy lets out a loud sigh, shaking as it leaves him. Still vibrating with fear, he fumbles, opening his last nut. There looks to still be bits of shell on the fruit, which he does not notice until it's in his mouth. He frowns a bitter frown and calms down somewhat, now distracted by the taste. Some of these are finished, mind. I nod at the fire. I can toss them to you if you'd like, if you're still scared. Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, he rocks his head. I'm fine, but I'm tired. Could you toss them anyway? Yeah, surely. Surely could. Also shall, but only if you agree to stay with me till sunset. Is it nude already? It is. I sit down myself, lounging across from him. He stares, his vision vis slowing and jumping and trying to focus. Eventually, he squints, leveling his eyes on me. Uh, did you say you do it for free? <coughs> Not this person. I said I'd cook these, and I am. He furrows his brow and frowns. Fight. I'll stay with you. Deal. The ballroom rattles with the sound. He isn't surprised by it. I smile again. So is that what you are? Tired? Yeah pick up a chestnut and throw it to him. He catches it somewhat dazedly. How long have you been gone from your moor, person? I don't know, like two days. I throw him another. Oh, was that a long time? No. It's a joke. Laugh. I don't want to. If I laugh, and basically be like be laughing at you and then you'll rip off all my bits. <laughs> Answering with a greater joke instead of simply laughing. You really are a jester. What are you talking about? I send one more his way. My existence. Ugh. My predicament and existence together are the greatest joke in all history. I know this, and I've missed half of it. Stop it. Such a soft lad. I tilt my head and regard him. I keep leafing through my headbook for the memory of another like you, but I'm finding nothing. And I have so many memories, did you know? So many, so many travels and delights and regrets. Boy shouldn't be so soft. The world's so rough it'll shape him ugly. Languidly breathing, the boy eases into his arms a little more. Or it was. It was a rough place. If you don't know more, is maybe this world's also soft now. It'd explain you. He blinks. Hi, kitty. Okay, I'll give you. A, I'll give you a second to settle in. You settled? You good? Okay, this is a story about a demon and a little boy who found the demon and now they're eating nuts together. Okay? Cool, you're all caught up. <clears throat> Where I was raised, in my moor, that was quite rough. You know why I'd laughed earlier? When you'd mentioned souls? You know why I joke about souls? He blinks. 
So many of us fiends are so obsessive over souls. It's just extraordinary. It's just it's just extraordinary souls, not unremarkable ones like the way yours feels. Have to look for those mature, spirited humans, their souls heavy with character and experience. He closes his eyes. A newborn soul, for example, won't do anything for you. It is special, though. Yes, a newborn soul is quite pure. Quite pure, really. His back rises and falls. S some, some stuff. Exquisite. I chuck a chestnut at his hair. It bounces off and goes to the ground. He doesn't even flinch. I look into the fire. I gaze into the fire. The fire. These stupid things inside of it. Piss these stupid things! For a flash of a moment, I consider turning them into ash, but doing so would break my pact. No, it wouldn't. I still won't. I would rather burn this thing. This boy. Blasted. I should have grabbed him while he was at the edge, but it'd have been so simple. Do I need his agreement to exchange his life for mine from the circle? Am I forgetting? Am I forgetting the conditions? This boy be damned for rekindling hopes in me. Pressing my hands into my face, angry, roughly, I glare at him through parted fingers. I breathe out. If I could just lunge out from here and take him, I'd do it. I would. I growl. My body still feels the sensation of when I last forced myself through the barrier. The searing into my marrow, the purging of my eyes, and I still would. I'd still lunge out from here. I'd bloody well do it thrice to get out of this blighted circle. Why didn't I grab him before? He was at the edge. Why didn't you pull him in? Take him! I've forgotten so much. Oh God, God, to cry to heaven, I... Is this what it was like? Having passions? I want to die. I wanted to leave, but not anymore. If this is passion, passion, passio, I want to die. I'd bite my tongue again, burst blood and drown in myself, nails in my wrists tearing and dig and tug and pull out my bleeding throat again. Ah! Whining silence every day. What is a day? Two days, he said. What are days? What are months? What are years? I've been here centuries. Centuries, was it longer? Did even centuries? Oh. Quiet settles in and the wind dashes the leaves. Scraping leaves, scraping leaves, scrape, howl, raindrops falling again, again, again. Embers on my hand, smoke. Sometimes I scream just to hear a voice again. Hick. What happened to my life? My jaw is quaking, my eyes are warm. I wish you hadn't come here. Taking my hands from my face, I look at this peaceful. He's so peaceful. Wake up! I throw another chestnut at him, missing. Wake up! Another and another. You see me, Kerr? You see me? This body, it doesn't grant this bloody piece of sleep. I take up a handful and toss them. I haven't slept a minute, bastard son of a slut bitch two-pence whore. I haven't slept a second. I've been always awake. Two days? You miserable little wretch, had I only been here two days, I'd drink a pub dry. Damn you here when you're dead, I'll find and spit on your grave. I'll plant an olive tree there, you rat bastard. I throw and throw and throw, missing, missing, missing. I hate you, I hate you. <laughs> Am I sobbing now? A fiend sobbing? <laughs> Why? I drop my arms to the ground, crying in shakes. For the life of me, I can't remember a time ever crying. 